Hey everyone, it's Kong again with another episode of Should You Summon. Before I get into the juicy meat of the episode, I want to take a quick moment to mention that Season 7 of the Summit Dare Langrisser Community Organized Tournament is starting up soon. In fact, registration ends on Friday, January 21st. That's soon. The tournament is open to everyone, and it's not just the top of the PvP crop that ends up playing. There are going to be a bunch of people who typically rank in gold tier and below registered this year as well, and it looks like we'll have around 100 participants broken up into groups for round robins. That means you're guaranteed to get a few games in, so it's a fantastic opportunity to get practice, experiment with your box or your strategy, and meet new people who are passionate about the game. So I've got a link to the registration page in the description below the like button, Definitely feel free to pop over, sign up for the tournament, and if you don't feel like you're quite up to playing PvP, then join the Discord anyway and watch some matches. That's a great way to learn as well. Anyway, on to the banner. This week we've got the return of the classic recurring Destiny banner featuring Elwyn, Leon, and Bernhardt, running from January 20th to February 2nd. This whole banner is on a nice tight schedule, so I'll get availability out of the way now. It should be coming back in June. First up we have Elwyn, who is a self-sustaining, decently mobile DPS and faction buffer for the beginner-friendly Legion of Glory. He's a member of Empire's Honor, buffed by Bernhardt, Leon, Lance, and Rosenseal, Legion of Glory, buffed by Leden, Elwyn, and Grenier, and Protagonists, buffed by Matthew and Lavina the Great. His buff for Legion of Glory boosts damage by 15% if you have more than 80% HP. He unlocks the attack bonds for Lana, Leden, Leon, and Liana, and the defensive bond for Hein, and he needs Hein for his own defensive bond and Liana for his own attack bond. He's useful for Phoenix, Scylla, and Valkyrie in the Eternal Temple, and he's also one of the popular units people use to help clear the Thunder Dragon, since he can basically solo it. He's still popular in Apex Arena as well, as a Glory Enabler, an Anti-Rush Zoner, or a possible Anti-Christian threat. Next up we have Leon. Leon is a highly mobile Cavalry DPS. He can extend his initial mobility with Chivalry, and his talent lets him retreat after attacking, every time. It's the main reason he's such a good hit and runner. He's a member of Empire's Honor, buffed by Bernhardt, Leon, Lance, and Rosenseal, and Strategic Masters, buffed by Ultimuller and Lanford. His faction buff for Empire's Honor increases damage by 5% for each tile moved before combat, up to a maximum of 15%. He unlocks the defensive bonds for Bernhardt and Lana, and the attack bonds for Werner Dime, Laird, and Roga. He needs Laird for his own defensive bond, and Elwyn for his own attack bond. He's still pretty useful for pretty much any general run-of-the-mill content, and he's great against Phoenix and Valkyrie in Eternal Temple and Sleipnir in Ancient Beckoning. In PvP, he can still be a good DPS option, particularly in single-target rush teams with Mech Knights and his 3C Scramble. Lastly, we have Bernhardt. Bernhardt is a bulky bruiser and faction buffer whose talent aura reduces nearby enemies' attack and defense. He's a member of Empire's Honor, buffed by Bernhardt, Leon, Lance, and Rosenseal, Dark Reincarnation, buffed by Bozel and Licorice, and Mythical Realm, buffed by Gizaroth and the Sage of the Trees. His vanilla faction buff for Empire's Honor grants plus 20% damage if you have class advantage, but his improved 3C faction buff gives plus 18% damage when entering battle, with no class advantage conditions. It also has a bunch of selfish bonus effects just for burn. He unlocks the attack bonds for Imelda and Vargas, and he needs Leon for his own defensive bond and Bozel for his attack bond. In PvE, he's another great choice against the Thunder Dragon. He's also good against Valkyrie in the Eternal Temple and Fenrir and Sleipnir in Ancient Beckoning thanks to his OP talent aura. He's still seeing a lot of use in Apex Arena thanks to his role as the linchpin of Empire-based teams, although his usage is dropping off a little in Seasons 9 and 10, as people seem to be pivoting to Meteor-based Assassin teams or full AoE Blast teams. Even though this is not a new banner, this is still one of my most highly recommended summons, especially for newer players. Thanks to the Destiny mechanic and the fact that the banner comes back every few months, you should be able to lock down all three of these big burly buffing bond unlockers eventually. 
So, with regards to upcoming banners, with Elma and Cortez set to arrive next week, we should hopefully be falling back into line with the Chinese release schedule, meaning it'll be easier for us to predict what will be happening and when. Anyway, that's it for this episode. I hope you found this video helpful, and definitely check out the Summit Dare Langris or two if that's something that interests you. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next Should You Summon. Extra special thanks of course to our Langrisser tier channel members for generously supporting the channel directly. Levitt, Derek Gunderson, William Householder, Kate Soon, Jared Portela, Eden Seal, Titan Bradicus, Shara Illimerius, and Jerome Meyer. Thanks so much everyone.